Anyway, anyway, Mike's here. Cafe anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. Welcome to the last place on earth, somewhere in Podcastro Valley and Cafe anyway. Hello, Spring. Spring is here. Mike's Daily Podcast. Spring has sprung, so it's time for Mike to sing to you and to everyone about the wonder that is spring and Christmas is the birth of the sun. But that's not this time of year. It's a different time of year, so I fear that my little singing was a little bit out of there and austere and sheer. Mike's daily podcast crazy but that's not neither here nor there hey there's a cat on my lap mike's again daily rocky the cat podcast hey rocky yeah it's episode 2579 2579 mike matthews is my name and i have been enjoying all the calls and the emails i've been getting if you'd like to email me it's mike's daily podcast at gmail.com and if you would like to call me it is 510 because that's where i am in the east bay area of the bay area 510-228 Four six four zero. That's five one zero two two eight four six four zero. No, I'm not going to talk like this the rest of the show. Well, more layoffs in the tech industry. More, more people without a job. More, more people not making oh upwards of two hundred thousand dollars a year. More. So nine thousand more workers were laid off by Amazon. That's in addition to the 18,000 cuts they did earlier this year. They've been cutting, clipping away. It's been a barbershop of jobs. People's really exorbitant pay jobs are getting cut left and right by the barbers of the tech industry. Thank you so much for that haircut. And here's today's podcast picture. It's of my new haircut. No. I'm not going to... Should I do that picture? I'm either going to do a picture of me. Because <laughs> it's a podcast about me. Well, my name's in it anyway. It's not really about me specifically. Or it'll be a picture from Hayward. Of the beautiful... This I pass by this beautiful little landscape every day. And lately it's gotten so green and pastoral and nice with the barn. And I really, I, that's, I like this picture. Maybe I'll do this one. Whatever it is, see it at mikesdailypodcast.com. The late great Basil the Boxer and I actually walked in this area. It's called the Garen Trail. And he and I walked on that years and years ago. Gosh, maybe 10 years ago. And it was a, such a fun day walking along with my dog. Did I tell you I saw another boxer lately? The boxer's name was Frazier. Uh, the guy that um, fought Ali. Because apparently you got to name your boxer after a boxer. So I, I didn't name my boxer after a boxer. His name was just Basil. Because it was a fun name and he, he looked. Like a basil But my cat has a name of a boxer Rocky So I don't get what happened there I guess I'm a little late I was supposed to name the dog that And the cat maybe could be named Basil But that didn't happen But Microsoft is using OpenAI To make it easier For doctors To take notes And you know doctors When they take notes They do that scribble that you can't read So maybe Maybe that's the, the issue. Uh, Toda. Um, I am trying to see now if, because I have the chat, make it do, but apparent, chat GBT. There we go. But it's not letting me do it. Apparently, I can like record this whole podcast or have it written down. Transcribed is what I'm trying to say. And have it transcribed. And then it would then be, you could read it (laughs) as if that was any kind of thing. But I just tried to open 
Microsoft Edge, and it's leading me to... Oh, it's giving me a beautiful... We're so glad you're here. Welcome to Microsoft 365. Create, organize, and collaborate all in one place for free. Microsoft 365. It's all free. It's got intuit... You can intuitively organize your content your way. And then, of course, they try and have you do the premium... And you can they, they got some things They can actually Teach you The front panel Will close automatically okay. Please remain well, seated I can't get to Apparently what I was thinking I could get to Here You're a very rude person The way you treat Sarah Huckabee Is horrible And the way you treat Other people are horrible You shouldn't treat people That way oh, I, pressed, I, I pressed the wrong icon We live in a world Of icons Have you known that I guess we have For a while Humans are very Icon driven it's all about image. It's all about, ooh, what do you look like? So let's see if um, this allows me to do this. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. Anyway. And I don't think it can because I'm using the microphone and recording it at the same time here. Uh, and yeah, all right. So that's what I've learned. And you've learned with me simultaneously what Microsoft is doing. We're outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. So apparently, Americans' total credit card balances have spiked to $930 billion. We continue to be impacted by both high inflation and interest rate hikes. And credit card balances just ended the year. With $930 billion, this marks an 18.5% increase over what 2021 had when balances were sitting at $785 billion. So it just continues to go up. The average generation owes. They owe. They owe. So off the work they go. Try and pay off all this debt. Generation Z, on average... Owes almost $3,000 Millennials Owe on average almost $6,000 Gen X Gen X Known as the sandwich generation Which means they are more likely to be supporting Both their children and aging parents They Owe $7,000 And baby boomers They're a little bit less $6,785 So just what experts say, the best way to get rid of your credit card debt is negotiate with your creditors, consolidate your debt, switch to a balance transfer credit card, or just bring in a a professional to help you and try and work it all out. But I've never been the best negotiator, so I don't know about the first tip there. I try to avoid debt like the plague. I am debt averse. I am like any If I can pay that off Now I'm going to do it And I've been trying to do that My whole life And I've been lucky at it But I know Some people aren't so lucky I know someone who Got into so much debt They just finally said That's it And they got rid of All their credit cards They paid them all off Got rid of the credit cards And then went to a debit card Which is not always The best idea Because If that gets hacked Then all kinds of issues Can happen And you can, uh, you know, they got instant access to your money. Real quick thing here. Someone I know is a huge Taylor Swift fan and they wrote this up. Her 2023 tour, she is not a billionaire yet, but the tour this year that she does could make her a billionaire. She's always been a very money savvy person. I think her dad is a money manager of some sort. But, you know, she is a 12-time Grammy winner. She broke into the music scene in 2006 with the song Tim McGraw. And you play Tim McGraw. Think about me. And I remember her performing that at a stage at an outdoor event we were doing when I was at the country station in 2006. And there was barely anybody there. I ended up Talking to her mom During her whole performance So I didn't really get to see it But Yes 
Taylor Swift. And there was a picture of me somewhere with her with it when she had the curly hair. I don't know where that picture went. I'm kind of glad it disappeared because that, that looked kind of weird with me <laughs> being decades older than her standing next to Taylor Swift. But I, I know she has had her picture taken with so many people. She, in the early years of her career, she was very accessible and her fans got to get lots of pictures with her. She was the highest paid female entertainer of 2022. She made $92 million that year. Combined income streams from physical record sales, streaming on platforms like Spotify, digital downloads. Didn't she not want her stuff streaming oh, on, or she didn't want her stuff on iTunes for the longest time? Digital downloads, licensing, they make up most of her money and 70% of Swift's 2022 earnings can be attributed to her back catalog of music. All the stuff she had done previously And she's kicking off her tour Or she did last week actually Making 52 stops So she has sold 51 million albums Oh what? She made 137.5 million dollars In the United States alone Off of her singles I think As I read this If that's correct Music in her new era when she joined Republic Records, she made 14 million just from the sister albums that she did. Remember, she redid Folklore. Or no, wait, she did two album, albums that were connected. Folklore and Evermore. And she wrote a lot of those songs with the guy, I can't think of his name now, but he was the writer and the singer for the band called The National. So she's willing to collaborate with a lot of different people and artists. Uh, in touring, this tour will hit the $1 billion ticket sales mark. Private concerts get at least $1 million per night. So if you, she does those and you got to fork out a million bucks. And then she's got merchandise. She's got endorsements. And then she's got some kind of perfume. And she was paid $26 million for doing the Diet Coke commercials. Plus, let's see. Some of her sponsors for her tours have included Papa John's, Qantas Airlines, Walgreens, American Greeting Cards, wow, AT&T, Activision, Capital One, CoverGirl, DirecTV, Macy's, Sony, Starbucks, Toyota. The City of New York sponsored her. Comcast and Verizon have sponsored her. American Express, Target, UPS, and Air Asia have all sponsored her. She has been in movies. Uh, there was the Cats movie that was a mega flop, but she got three billion, uh, three million to do that. Three million dollars to dress up as a cat and be all weird and freaky looking. And of course, you know the main criticism of Cats about a particular. Uh, Anatomical design of cats That was put into all the costumes That was like yeesh Why did you go that far An episode of CSI Crime Scene Investigation She was in She was in the movie The Giver The Lorax And wasn't she in that Valentine's Day one Or the Remember there, there was those movies That were all themed around a particular holiday It was either New Year's Day or Valentine's Day it definitely wasn't Groundhog's Day. And then she's done fashion. Uh, she was with Keds, the, the shoes, LEI, and Stella McCartney she worked with. And she has at least $81 million in real estate. She has spent that much. That's pretty thorough, what I just said. Thank you to Rob Black for pulling all that information. Okay, and if you want to hear some amazing artists that may rival Taylor Swift who are up and coming and want to someday be as big as her, everyone's got to start somewhere. I featured some brand new music in the segment, the Mike Matthews New Tunes Feud. And I did that two podcasts ago. It was FF episode 2,500 and... 
76. 2576. It was called Green. And I did that. Nope. Nope, that's wrong. Sorry, it was the one chicory. <laughs> 2,577. 2,577. Finally, I would like to read this little bit for you. In this money world of which we are talking about today. Somebody wrote this commentary. Vanguard, one of the two largest money management companies in America, shocked the industry recently when they announced its withdrawal from an anti-fossil fuels industry alliance. They withdrew from an anti-fossil fuel industry alliance. The CEO, Tim Buckley, not only defended that move, but went on to say that Vanguard's research shows no benefit to ESG investing. That stands for... Environmentally Something something It's It's uh, Environmental social governance A framework that helps stakeholders Understand how an organization is managing risk And opportunities related to environment Social and governance criteria There we go It takes the holistic view That sustainability Extends To Other things Extends beyond just environmental issues. Okay. So, Vanguard's research showed that there was no benefit to that. And investment firms should basically stay out of politics and let boards of directors govern in the interest of their shareholders, not hot button political issues. This writer says it's been a terrible year for environmentally, environmental, social governance. And politicized capital. Anybody into the politicized using hot political button issues? It's been a terrible year for those companies. BlackRock's been getting fired. Uh, been getting fired by red state pension managers. Left wing proposals are getting voted down, and now one of the most prestigious names in finance is shifting its rhetoric, and is shifting. So the shift in rhetoric alone is a big win, this writer says, for advocates of the separation of investment and politics. Says, okay, so that's a very interesting thing to say. Investment and politics should be separated. Let's see, what else should be separated from politics? Mm, Religion? Church lady? Dana Carvey? If you watch this one, Kevin Nealon, it's called Hiking with Kevin, that thing he does on YouTube. He's been, he's been doing it for five years. It's so fun to watch because when people are walking together and hiking and getting exercise and breathing in all this oxygen, they say things that are pretty profound and interesting. And uh, <laughs> he's walking with, let's see, it's, oh, Fred Armisen. And they're, they're in Griffith Park. They're in Southern California near the Griffith Park Observatory and Greek Theater and all that. And they're walking along in the hills and the hills are dusty and dry. Even, even this, which was done fairly recently. It's a little bit greener down there, but they're walking along and suddenly Kevin Elon goes, oh my gosh, there's Dana Carvey. And Dana Carvey's jogging along on the trail and they start to talk and Fred Armisen says, you know... The character I do on Saturday Night Live for the Californians. Mike, what are you doing here? That was all based on the way Dana Carvey was imitating his own son. So Dana was talking to Fred and they were in San Francisco before some comedy event. And Dana says, oh, my son, he says to Fred Armisen. Let me tell you about my son. He, he's, he's like, Dad, I don't want to do that. And it was fascinating. And Dana Carvey said, you know, to Fred, how long did it take you before you got calm and adjusted to working at Saturday Night Live? Because you were on Saturday Night Live for so many years. And Dana Carvey said it took him about four years to finally calm down and not feel sick to his stomach every show. And Fred said, I forget what he said. I want to say he said around the same amount of time. To find out, you should check out that podcast. Because it's fascinating, those guys. And Dana Carvey 
he really took, he said, once I came up with church lady and that was early on, I got super popular and maybe some of the younger people listening are going church who? Well, it was a thing back in the early nineties and my mom loved that skit so much, but we're outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. There's some people we got to visit with that did not take off and become really popular like church lady. But we love them just the same. Look who's here. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? I got my horse down there right here. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh. Wow. Nilly is bumping into me and my microphone. That's too bad. Because that made that sound. <laughs> yes. All right. I'll ask him. Why the long face? All right. Look who else is here. It's a disgruntled fiddle player, tell you what. What? That is the oldest joke in the whole world. Why'd you have to bring it up? I think I haven't said that joke in a while, so... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, BlackRock, they gotta take off and they better not touch my pension, tell you what. What? The thing I just said about BlackRock. Okay. Let's see. Politics. I think that's really rich. Politics... Uh, and, and, and and should stay out of or whatever should stay out of politics it's and then and, and then people they don't notice the well you got my point look who else is here hello Mark I'm some why are you okay yeah I'm, uh, uh, I'm a little thirsty I might drink that root beer hey you just stole my root beer yeah, it's good. Drink it right now, I kill you. I'm not going to drink the root beer that you just drank. What? What's going on? I will not be forced to draw. I'll have a little sip. Well, wait a minute. We're still in the uh, what's a, it, we're in the endemic world now instead of the pandemic world. Yeah, maybe I'll forego that. You'll just have to try and cut me. Oh, he left. Good. Okay, well, this show is short. It's not 49 minutes like the last show. And the show before that was something like 45. We're going to keep it short and sweet today. And brevity is the soul of wit and all that. Hey, thank you for listening. Tell all your friends. And you can chime in and tell me what you think about anything we covered today. 510-228-4640. And with ways to email me, here's A-Frame. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.